Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books, and I've been covering Disney and Marvel very closely these last few months. Obviously, Marvel's in a panic. They've been making some severe changes recently. Some of them we've seen, some of them we haven't seen yet. What we did just see is Bob Iger said he was going to be taking a close look at Marvel and Star Wars because he wanted to focus on quality over quantity. Well, that led to woke Marvel producer and co-president of Marvel, Victoria Alonso, getting thrown out of Marvel. Now, exactly how she left, on what terms, we don't know because they really didn't say anything, but it's all over all the Hollywood trades. You've probably seen it all over YouTube. Victoria Alonso, who had been with Marvel since 2006 and a very big force pushing for diversity and social justice and representation and turning all of the Marvel franchises inside out to please her agenda, is now gone out of the company as of Friday, March 17th. That is definitely a huge change for Marvel. Marvel's also canceling Captain Marvel. Will they reboot it? Probably. They'll probably reboot it yet again. Again, they've rebooted it many, many times, but it's canceled. Now, the Marvels are supposed to be coming out, the movie, in November. It's going to be a disaster. I mean, who is going to go see the Marvels? Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania was really the wake-up call that, okay, look, we've got to make changes, and this never should have been released. The movie was the most unfinished movie that ever probably was released by a major company. Not just the visual effects, but the story. The storytelling, the dialogue, it was like, how could you release that film in that current state? And the way you know that even Marvel and Disney are aware of how bad it is, and the fans are aware of how bad it is, is because Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I thought it was horrendous and unspeakable and a, really a crime against nature to do a sequel, call it Black Panther, but really have it be World of Wakanda and not actually focus on the character as a sequel. It's offensive to human dignity to do something like that. The movie did make some money, did not make as much money as Black Panther 1. There were a lot of defenders in my comments about it. I've made several videos about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and there are no defenders. There are a couple people that said, well, it's not that bad, but they weren't out defending it. They know it was a bad movie. Everyone knows it was a bad movie. Shazam! Fury of the Gods? I haven't seen it yet. I've heard people like it. It's done terrible at the box office. I've also heard that it's goofy. So Shazam! is a bigger failure. But the difference is Shazam! Fury of the Gods is the history of the DCU. It's from the past. Although Peter Safran was a producer on Shazam! Fury of the Gods, the whole tone and the whole lack of continuity in the overall story, the lack of this is part of an ongoing story, an ongoing universe, is something that Shazam did not have because it's clearly Shazam 2 is going to be the end of Shazam. This article of Den of Geek discusses the concept pretty well. Shazam 2 and the birth of the lame duck superhero movie, Shazam Fury of the Gods might be the victim of a new Hollywood trend, shared universe movies that lead to nowhere because the character is not going to continue in continuity or in the story. If Victoria Alonso wanted to focus so much on representation, she could have done her job to help build Marvel properly as the brand that it was instead of replacing the male characters instead of destroying everything that was already built by doing something like they do in the comics. Marvel voices pride number one. Do I want to go out and buy this? No, it looks ridiculous. I'm not interested in this. But if people like it, that's great. Then you put a little section off to the side and you allow people to have whatever representation they want to have in those comics you associate it with a major brand and that's charity people aren't going out to want to buy something like this of course they're not this is something victoria never realized and they also didn't get the concept of momentum at disney they never really understood that marvel as powerful as a brand as it was it still needed to keep putting out what was working to be able to continue to build the credit and the credibility to have people buy everything they were going to do. When they saw merchandise sales decline, they excused it. When they saw some films not do as much business as prior films, they excused it. When they saw fans that were saying, hey, wait, what are you doing? Why are you changing all the characters around? Why, you, you're getting rid of Captain America. You're getting rid of Iron Man. You're, you're making these movies woke. You're making a point to throw it in people's faces. Why are you doing this? They didn't listen to those fans. They could have listened. They ignored every possible chance to turn the thing around. And now Bob Iger has a complete mess on his hands. He might stay a little bit longer as CEO. He's not going to stay that much longer. They need to fix this, and it's truly unfixable. Now let's get into the first article. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Now I want to go over a little bit more of what Victoria Alonso's 
influence on Marvel was. You get a sense of now that she's gone, some of that is going to be changed. I'm not saying having her out is going to automatically make Marvel a great brand again. In fact, it probably is five or 10 years away from even potentially being a great brand. But I think it is good to look at some of what her initiatives were. Actually wound up being a co-president when she was finally thrown out of the company. You get a sense of how important her influence was and how much destruction it caused on the brand. The MCU has been a shambles since Captain Marvel with Phase 4 a disaster and Phase 5 not starting off on a high note. This is coming of course from Cosmic Book News. Marvel's woke producer Victoria Alonso has parted ways with Marvel Studios and the MCU. The Hollywood Report reports the exit happened just this past Friday but the specific details are not yet publicly known. Alonzo has been with Marvel Studios since the beginning as she started off as Chief of Visual Effects and Post Production in 2006, and she served as a co-producer on the first Iron Man movie released in 2008 as well as on Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America the First Avenger. Alonzo was executive producer with the release of The Avengers in 2011 and served in an executive producer role all the way up to her departure where she's listed as executive producer on Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and has Secret Invasion and Ironheart coming up on Disney+. Plus. Her most recent title at Marvel Studios was President, Physical and Post-Production, Visual Effects, and Animation Production. The X-Men are outdated. Victoria Alonso is also the Marvel producer who said the term X-Men is outdated simply because X-Men has the word men in it. She also blasted former Disney CEO Bob Chapek over Disney's stance on Florida's parental rights and education bill, where it recently became known that Chapek privately complained to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis about the pressure from the woke left. Alonzo also made comments in the summer of 2021 about how Marvel is consistently trying to get a representation right, no matter how many times it takes. She doesn't care about how many failures they have and how it damages the brand. They'll keep punishing the brand until they've forced all of the representation in. And she did quite a good job of it. She's obviously been so focused on this that people would get out of her way. And she had a lot of sway. She was a co-president at Marvel. Feige wasn't standing up to her. No one was standing up. There were a lot of visual effects problems. Victoria Alonso was also said to be behind problems that had been reported with Marvel and its visual effects artists and studios. Back in January, Vulture posted a lengthy article in part stating Victoria Alonso is behind an industry blacklist. Quote, two other technicians with experience working on Marvel projects lay responsibility for the fear of an alleged blacklist at the feet of Alonso. The main one that everyone is quite scared of is Victoria Alonso, says a Vancouver-based tech who has vowed to never work for the studio again. She is known in the industry as a kingmaker. If she likes you, you're going to get work and move up in the industry. If you have pissed her off in any way, you're gonna get frozen out. Chris Lee, who also wrote the article, also tweeted the news of her exit. Quote, so many visual effects sources have told me Victoria Alonso was singularly responsible for Marvel's toxic work environment, a kingmaker who rewarded unquestioning fealty with an avalanche of work, but who also maintained the blacklist that kept FX pros wild-eyed with fear. She held a crazy amount of power, bigfooting all major creative decisions on Marvel movies and shows. Kevin Feige and Victoria Alonso personally approved every single shot. All the visual effects work, which is usually the job of a director or a showrunner, one tech told me. The news follows Disney CEO Bob Iger offering Disney is going to take a careful look at both Star Wars and Marvel, and that's similar to how Disney slowed things down, meaning they didn't really produce much in the way of movies. Following the failure of The Last Jedi, Disney is now slowing things down with Marvel. The Marvels has been pushed back a second time with the latest from summer to November. Disney Plus has recently been updated where the Marvel shows no longer list a release date but only show coming soon. MCU is really on the decline. Kevin Feige's Marvel Cinematic Universe has been on the decline since the release of the Brie Larson Captain Marvel movie, where just as Cosmic Book News predicted, diversity would destroy the MCU. And he certainly did in this classic article going all the way back to 2019. Fast forward four years later and the MCU is in shambles with releases for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which is doing so poorly at the box office that it will make less than the first Ant-Man released in 2015, even though Quantumania has been touted as featuring MCU's next big villain, Kang, and leading to two big Avengers movies. Thor Love and Thunder is also a big blunder, of which Victoria Alonso executive produced, and she's also behind the Captain Marvel, Black Widow, What If, Eternals, Hawkeye, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, all major disappointments. Kevin Feige chose to go with the get woke, go broke approach that Marvel Comics started adapting 10 years ago and now is costing them dearly, as fans have been rejecting the politically motivated content, which sees fan favorite characters and decades worth of comics destroyed all for the sake of a woke agenda. As a result, Kevin Feige has also been removed from his Star Wars movie, 
but everybody has been removed from their Star Wars movie or has been quitting them. There are, this is Damon Lindelof, the guy behind Lost and HBO's Watchmen, turned in his script for a Star Wars proposal and then left the project within days. Supposedly Kathleen Kennedy was giving him notes on his proposal and he's just like, you know what? I'm dropping this. I don't want to deal with you people. The MCU has multiple problems. The Screen Rant article covers a few of them. These are enormous. These are not fixable problems. The MCU's four biggest problems Phase five needs to fix after Quantumania. So here's the, here's the problems. And they do a pretty good job of listing the problems. But the thing about these problems is this is sort of like something you can't solve. Like, well, if we could just go back in time or if we just had a money machine, we could just make as much money as we wanted. So these are truly unsolvable problems. Of the four problems, the MCU's box office is trending down. Well, yes, that's, that's a problem. So you do have to fix that. How are you going to fix that? You're going to fix that with the Marvels? Guardians of the Galaxy will probably do better than Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because it's probably not at least as unfinished. It's probably better, but you know, who knows? There are a lot of people that are disappointed with it. Maybe it does 50% better, which, you know, would put it in Wakanda forever territory. The MCU's Rotten Tomato average keeps getting worse. Yeah, it does. It keeps getting worse. That's not a good sign. That shows that not only fans are not as interested, but customers who are watching the films are looking at it and saying, hey, this isn't something that people like. So how are you going to fix that? Oh, just make great movies. That's no problem. Popular phase one through phase three characters took a back seat after Endgame. Yes, they wiped the slate clean of all the characters people were actually interested in. And then they spent millions and millions of dollars and all sorts of time and energy developing alternatives to Iron Man, alternatives to every character that you might actually care about. Well, how's that going to turn out? How's the Ironheart show going to do? Were people interested in the Ironheart introduction in Wakanda Forever? And lastly, the MCU Phase 4 was missing a new post Thanos direction. If you're going to go ahead and you're going to plan multiple releases and you're not going to have a direction, an overarching story, as the screenwriter for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania said, he doesn't care about phases. Well, that's fine. But that was sort of like a whole idea that you'd have this overarching story to then support all of the continuity in the universe and how you're moving everything forward. It's sort of a big deal. Again, Kevin Feige like, yeah, well, whatever. Not standing up for anything that's important for Marvel. Because as Kevin Feige said, anything that you put a Marvel label on is Marvel. So it doesn't matter what it is. The MCU is missing a post Thanos direction. Well, this is not fixable. Maybe if they could go back in time, they could go ahead and fix this and then redo all the content. I think it's going to be, you could tell me, I wish you would in the comments below, how long you think it's going to take for Marvel to fix itself and what you might do to fix the company. Uh, I look at it and I say, this is really something that is almost unfixable. It could be fixable. You'd have to go to the old school comics guy, Jim Shooter, Jim Salacrum, the guys who do how to run story and understand editorial and understand integrating continuity and universes. This is pre-1990. I'm taking you all the way back. I'm not talking about something that just looks cool from the early 90s. I'm talking about something that the story is thought out. I think there are people that would do it. Do you think that Bob Iger, Kevin Feige, any of those guys there have the will to do it? Or are they just going to let this thing deflate until it's a destroyed franchise like the Star Wars films. Really would like to see what you have to say in the comments below. I really do appreciate your comments. I love when you leave those. Please be sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.